Good morning, guys. Bit of an interesting morning so far. I've actually been talking to TK from XDA about audio stuff pretty much the entire morning, in addition to doing day job type stuff. TK's been making videos for XDA for quite a while now, but he's gotten complaints over the years about his audio quality. And I, I listened to it again, and it's got it's got a little bit of a hiss to it. So I tried to give as much information as possible as to, to how I would recommend fixing it. But just in case you're curious, I wanted to show you guys my setup very quickly. This is what I'm currently using. I use the Rode video mic, good old fashioned standby. It's one that's been out for a very long time. It comes out to this little cable that's attached to it. And then I have this very long, very thick cable that goes into my camera. Again, currently not set up, but it just goes into the three and a half millimeter jack on my camera. However, I am using a camcorder at this point, which means that the audio quality is significantly better than you get out of a DSLR just because the preamps built into a DSLR are terrible. So what you normally do in that point is add in something like this, which TK is already doing. This is the Tascam DR05. I use this for a very long time and I still use it for things like uh, when I'm at events and things. Uh, and what I normally do with this is I either hook the Rode video mic into that or I hook this Rode pen mic into it. And it doesn't have to be anything like this. It doesn't have to be ultra high end. There are some really inexpensive uh, boom microphones you can get on Amazon. And actually this boom mic pole, I've got a couple of these actually because they were like $20 for two on Amazon. So I've got a couple of them that I just keep around. So if someday one of these happens to break, I've got a spare. And it's just this really inexpensive on-stage stands brand. But yeah, the biggest thing, if you're gonna be recording your video and your audio using a DSLR, is turn the audio from automatic to manual and turn it all the way down, all the way down to like one or two clicks above the absolute minimum on the camera. And then use something like this, the Tascam, and in this case, see, I'm gonna turn it on. You're gonna to have to actually turn up the output. So right now, you can see I've got it there. And the volume on mine is right at about 50%. I can turn it up. I can just use the plus and minus buttons on here to make it louder and quieter. And actually, I have used this just on the boom mic stand because it does have a tripod mount on it. So I can stick that on the end of my boom mic stand and use the microphones from it to record if I wanted to do that as well. But that's definitely one of the big things about making videos on YouTube that I found is the sound quality is such a huge part of it. The people, if you don't have good sound quality, a lot of times people will just click away from the video, which is why I've fought for so long with it. Every time I get a new camera, every time I get a new microphone, a new anything, I will usually spend a couple of days just tweaking with it, trying new settings, trying things out to see what changes that make. And when I'm editing my videos, when I'm testing things out, I'll put on the, the over-ear headphones I've got because you just, you get MP, you get really pounded with the sound that way. So you know exactly what it's going to sound like in the absolute worst case scenario, somebody wearing a pair of headphones like that, that's what they're going to hear. So when I've been doing testing, when I was testing with like my Canon 60 or the, the T5i, the T4i, T3i, T2i in the past, every time I've tested any of those, I've used the big giant can over ear headphones to try to get as much sound pumped into me as possible so I could hear every little detail that somebody on the other end might potentially hear as well. Anyway, weird little bit of an intro there. But yeah, if you've ever been curious about the way that I film my videos, I've had a bunch of people ask. This is the camera that I use for the majority of my normal videos. This is the Sony FDR-AX33. Uh, it's a sort of an expensive camcorder, but it's only expensive because it does 4K. I think Sony does some other ones that do 1080p 60, and that's the, what I really use this for. I bought it for 4K because I like the idea of being able to do it, but I found that I really prefer 1080p at 60 frames per second, like I'm recording right now. So I've just sort of defaulted to using that, but now I am sort of future-proof for a little while because this does have that built in. And unlike the new Sony RX100 Mark IV, that camera can actually record 4K at longer than five minutes. I recorded 4K, I think, at 20 or more minutes before and didn't have any issues with it. It doesn't overheat, it doesn't stop the clip, it doesn't do anything that it's not supposed to do. Love that camera. Although it's not great in low light, I will definitely admit that. If you have any sort of shadows, the blacks and everything gets very, very grainy very quickly. But still, it, it's definitely not bad. Well, it's around lunchtime and I need a little bit of a break before Duncan gets home from school. So I'm actually gonna run out and fly the HMX 280. Since I got this and I, I did a quick video about it over on the Tool.TV channel, I actually haven't had the opportunity to fly it. So hopefully there's nobody over at the soccer field because I, I desperately need to get this thing out and fly it. Whoa. 
Well, that was both scary and exhilarating. I absolutely want to do that again, like right now. Unfortunately, I've only got the one battery, so I'm back at home now. I've got to go ahead and charge the battery and everything. And unfortunately, we've got stuff to do tonight, so I'm not going to be able to even take it back out again. But I did have an excellent idea. I've been flying around these, the Atop YD822. I've been flying these around separately on my own, right? Uh, but as I've mentioned before, they're a game. You're, it's, a, it's an IR sensitive game and they shoot at each other and they can make them fall out of the sky. So what I would like to do, uh, what I thought about doing is if I had the single player version, I was going to give Duncan the, the little turret and let him try to shoot me out of the air with it. That would be fun. However, since we don't have that, we have the dual version, I'm going to have him hold the quadcopter like this, hold it from underneath so there's no chance of being near the props, or even hold it like this maybe. So, so he can be underneath it and be controlling where it's pointing, and then hold the, the controller with the other hand, not touching the throttle, and, and use that to fire at me and see if he can shoot me out of the air in the backyard. I think that'd make an interesting section to the video. All right, I'm excited now. I wanted to go ahead and share this with you. UPS just dropped off a package. This should be the new RX100 Mark III. Another box within a box. Wow, that's... A lot of extra packaging there. All right, second box is open. Went ahead and stuck you guys on a tripod for the moment because I figured this would be a little bit easier than moving things around and having to turn it off and back on. So as I mentioned, when I ordered the, the second RX100 Mark III, they had a kit, had a bunch of stuff in it. So here's what came in the box. Here's the, it's a Focus five-piece digital camera accessory kit. So it's got a little memory card wallet and cleaning stuff. Have some sort of a cable. Oh, it's an HDMI cable, so a what looks to be a mini or micro HDMI to full-size HDMI, in case that's needed. You have a micro SD card reader slash writer. Not entirely necessary, probably will never end up using it, but still a nice option to have. An SLR or DSLR Pro hand grip. So I guess this is something you could put on your camera and hang on to it a little bit easier. Again, not really sure why this would come with a pocket camera, but whatever. A high voltage rechargeable battery. Compatible with Sony NPBX1. So, oh, and that's a 1900 milliamp hour one. The ones I've been using so far, I believe, are 1600 milliamp hours. So, there you go. Now I've got another one, and of course, I can charge these all using the same charger. But I guess just in case, rapid travel charger, one hour quick charge. So, that's another good option to have. Oh, and a Sony 64 gigabyte, 40 megabytes per second card should work just fine with this. I've been using much faster cards than this, but I've also used slower cards in the Senate, and they work just fine. I'm not doing 4K footage or anything. Oh, and that's definitely going to be handy a Bauer mini bendable tripod. It's uh, kind of like the little Joby monopods, the Gorilla Pods, but of course it's not, so different brand. And a lens cleaning pen. I've actually got a couple of these. Love these things. I stick one in every backpack that I carry. And a camera case. Man, this bag was just full of everything. This little kit came with just everything you could possibly want in it. Camera case, too. And finally, sort of the, the real important point of it all, the RX100. And it's the wrong camera. Everything fell to the floor, just like my expectations. Yeah, this does not have a flip-out screen. This is not the RX100 Mark III. So it gets to go back to Amazon. Awesome. Well, I'm completely bummed out now. That really just, it took my day from about an eight down to about a four. And I know that's, that's nothing to really ruin a day over, but that just, you know, thoroughly sets me off. Lesson learned there, just avoid Amazon warehouse deals, apparently. I thought I was going to get a good deal, you know, buying something used, buying something lightly used, and you just end up getting screwed over. Luckily, Amazon does have an amazing return policy on these things. I, I went ahead and went through their website and just filled it out and said, you sent me the wrong thing, hit the print button, and I've got a return label, shipping and everything is covered, so it should all be coming back very soon. I can't really justify paying the full price for a brand new RX100 Mark III, but I don't know. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. The, the RX100 I'm using right now takes amazing video, but I have to hold it farther away from me than I'd like, and it doesn't have that flip-out screen, so I can't make sure that everything's in focus all the time. So I guess the options are either to go with a, a less expensive camera, like the, the Canon Vixia Mini. I think that's three or four hundred dollars. The, the Vixia Mini X is the new one. Although I, does, I don't think that it actually does 1080p 60, but there have been several of you guys that say that you don't like 1080p 60, so I don't even know at this point. I'm halfway tempted to just start doing this on a cell phone because there are some cell phones that have really good cameras, really good front-facing cameras that I could do this on. I mean, technically I could do it all on the ZUK Z1. It has an excellent camera. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. 
But one way or another, this one's definitely going back. So I gotta make a trip to UPS either tonight or tomorrow. Ugh, what a day. Uh, yeah, it's been a very, very long evening. Uh, I've actually been working on video for XDA that's supposed to be going up, I guess, in the morning. For whatever reason, there, there was a video that went up on XDA this morning from TK. There was a video that went up tonight uh, about some interesting Kickstarter projects, and now I'm going to be doing the Z1 launch event recap. So we've got a bunch of videos going up all at the same time, which is going to be really difficult in terms of view counts, because the people that are coming back to see them, they're just going to have their inboxes flooded. Anyway. But yeah, we went out and we did some stuff tonight. Of course, didn't really film any of that. And when we got back, actually, Duncan saw there, our, our neighbors across the road have uh, grandkids that are about his age. So he immediately you know, started yelling, I want to go play, I want to go play. So he had never met these kids before. He went over there and said hello. He invited them over to play basketball. Again, not my kids. I, I, did, I chose not to go out there and film any of that. Plus, I was working on the video at the same time. So lo lots of stuff going on. But yeah, it's been a ridiculously long day. And I've got to get back to making this video. And I'm still really, really bummed about the, the RX100 Mark III. I did some tests with the, the ZUK camera, and it's it's definitely not going to be a camera that I use for, for making these kinds of videos. I guess maybe I might try using the camera on the, the Galaxy S6 while I still have it. Maybe I could use the one on the G4. I don't know. It would be very nice to be able to use the front-facing camera on a device, but the Galaxy S6 doesn't have enough room on it. The G4 does definitely because of the SD card slot but the front-facing camera on it is just not all that great. The audio is not that great. So I'm still very much up in the air about it. I mean, the, a few of you guys like the way that the Xiaomi Yi camera footage looked, but I just, I don't know. There's something about it, especially in this kind of lighting, which is, you know, as you can see, how, how I film a lot of these videos. The audio on it is not great. It's very, very quiet. Uh, and just in low lighting, it's not very good. But in the worst case scenario, I guess that is definitely an option. I don't know. I'll have to continue thinking about it. And if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section. I'm open to the idea of spending money on a camera to get something that's small and pocketable and has a flip out screen. Uh, and I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be 1080p at 60 frames a second. It's just something that I really prefer to do. I mean, especially for traveling. Like, I mean, I had the RX100 Mark III on me when I went to China, and it was so nice to be able to use that. I used that as almost my primary camera while I was there because when we went out and about, I had it in my pocket the whole time. Anyway, I'm not gonna bother you guys with all that. Let me know if you have any comments or suggestions down in the comments below, of course. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to receive more videos when they become available, and I'll see you again tomorrow.